All right, today we're going to do just an introduction to what we call the mole in chemistry. This can be a very difficult thing for a lot of beginning chemistry students to understand because of the name and the size of what the mole really is. So uh, take it one step at a time. Try to take it at any uh, level that you can. And as we go, we'll develop it more and more. Okay, so at the ending of this, we're also going to watch a about short uh, four and a half minute video that will help kind of emphasize and reemphasize some things that uh, we just talked about. It's very important when you're learning something new that you hear it uh, in different kinds of ways, in different kinds of views uh, to help um, be put into the chemistry knowledge that you already have. So if we were brainstorming and I was there, uh, the first two things I would have asked you is write down some units that represent a value. Okay. And then the second thing I would have asked is items uh, too large or too many to count. Okay, so for example, what do I mean by that units that represent a value? Well, we know right now that like a dozen equals 12, right? Whenever I say a dozen, it always equals 12, no matter what. What other things have a certain value already attached to it? In the past, this is from the previous years, uh, people would have said a pair equals two. Or a gross is actually a dozen dozen, so that equals 44. A baker's dozen is 13. You could say a ton is 2,000 pounds. A score, like four score and seven years ago, score is always set at 20. And a ream, like a ream of paper is 500. These are set amounts, okay? They always are. If you ever ask for a dozen of anything, you're always going to get 12, always. Okay, so we're going to kind of keep going back to a dozen as we talk about this. And then I'd ask you, what are uh, items that are just too large, too many to count in the universe, in the world, wherever? And these are some of the answers that I got uh, in previous classes. Uh, insects, too many insects to count, huge number. Leaves, leaves in the world, or leaves on even a tree, really difficult to count. Maybe the hair. The hair on your head, unless you're Homer Simpson, more difficult to count. A tree's in the world. Stars, definitely. Stars in the sky, stars in the universe, really difficult to count. Grains of sand. Grass. And that leads us to atoms. All right, I'm trying to relate the rest of these two atoms. So you do not necessarily need to write all these down, but I think it does help kind of get us in the mindset. So what is a mole? Just like a dozen is 12. Keep remembering that. If a dozen is 12, then this is what you need to know for now. One mole, one mole equals 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. It's a huge number. What I really would like you to do all the way across your paper, please actually write it down. All right, this is my number. So if you, um, this is the easiest way to do it. Just write 6022 and then write 20 more zeros after it. 20 more zeros. Look how big that is. This is a million right here. That's a billion. We're a lot larger than that. Well, the number, because it's so large, we don't always say 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. It was actually named after the founder, the person who discovered it. And his name was Avogadro. We call it Avogadro's number. It was an Italian physicist who discovered this. And in the video you're going to see in a couple of minutes, you'll have a little more information about him. So let's talk about the relationships that you need to start understanding. The other day we talked about molar mass, okay? And this is the important part. When we talk about the molar mass of something, the definition was that is the mass of one mole of that substance. So this is extremely important. If I have one mole of something, I have that many particles. It could be atoms, it could be molecules, but that's how many particles I have in one mole. Well, one mole also equals a molar mass. So this relationship is extremely important. Notice one mole is in the middle. I don't have that many particles equaling that mass. 
It's always equaling one mole. And the best way I can say that or I compare that to is if I have one dozen cars, okay, or one dozen feathers. If I have one dozen cars and one dozen feathers, how many do I have of each? If I have a dozen cars, I have 12. If I have a dozen feathers, I have 12. But are the masses the same? Right? If I have one mole of something, I always have that. Oops. I always have this number. If I have one dozen of something, I always have 12. But if I have one dozen of cars, the mass is going to be much greater than if I have one dozen of feathers. Even though I have 12 of each, the masses are different. Atoms weigh different amounts. So let me show you two examples. I think this will already start to help you a little bit. If I have a mole of oxygen, one mole of oxygen, I have this many particles of oxygen. But how many grams does that weigh? If I have exactly that many particles, it weighs exactly 16 grams. All right? I'll compare and contrast. If I have a mole of silver, it should all go in your notes right now. If I have a mole of silver, I have that many particles of silver. Same if I have that many moles of, if I have one mole of uh, oxygen, I have that many particles of oxygen. But here's the big difference. Look at the grams. I have 16 grams of oxygen. Where did I get that? From the periodic table. And if I have one mole of silver, I have 107 grams of silver. So it definitely weighs more. Each particle weighs a little bit more because it's a little bigger. It has more protons and has more neutrons in each one. So it adds up to a much larger mass. So let's look at how we're going to do an example. T-charts. We're doing T-charts. This is why we're doing T-charts. Okay, we're just going to write two examples down. How many grams are in 4.5 moles of CO2? So I always write down what I know which I have 4.5 moles of CO2. All right, with all T-charts, what have we learned? We take the unit that's on the top in the first step and we bring it where? To the bottom of the second step or the first step, if you really want to call it that. So I have one mole of CO2. Where'd I get one? I'm looking up here. Notice it's always one, okay? Just kind of keep that in mind for now. I have one mole of something. Either it's going to equal the number of particles or it's going to equal the mass. Well, in this case, I want mass. So if you looked up on the periodic table of the mass, the grams of CO2, what is the mass of CO2? Carbon is 12. Oxygen is 16. 16 times 2 is 32, plus 12 is 44 grams. This is a ratio. This is why we did dimensional analysis. One mole equals 44 grams. Okay, it's always going to be the case for CO2. If I had one mole of oxygen, that would say 16 right now. And then do I multiply or divide? I'm going to multiply. You're going to have a problem with the word moles for a little while. But this is why we learned the T-charts, to try to have some familiarity with it to allow us to execute some of these problems. Okay, so just keep thinking that mole is a dozen. It's just a much bigger value. And if I have 4.5 moles, I'm going to have 198 grams. And basically what it's saying is one mole of that weighs 44 grams. Well, I have 4.5 of them. So it should make sense that I have a much larger number because I have 4.5 of these, of 44 grams. So it's one point, or 198 grams. One more. How many atoms are found in 17 grams of sodium? And when I say atoms, that is the same as particles, okay? So how many atoms are found in 17 grams of sodium? I want you to take a look up here in blue. Basically, I'm asking for this value. How many atoms? How many particles? I'm starting in grams. So notice, I need to go to moles, and then I need to go to particles. I need to do two steps. That's why I have two steps right here. So first, grams have to go on the bottom, right? Grams of Na. Whenever it's mass, and we're going to talk about this a lot more on Friday, but whenever it's mass, I look at the periodic table. So if you look at the periodic table, sodium weighs 23. And the molar mass means that I have one mole of it. Look, one mole on top equals a mass. One mole equals 23 grams. 
So what automatically goes to the bottom of the next step? One mole. Well, I want to find atoms. So if I look up here in the blue, one mole of something equals that many particles, that many atoms. Just like one dozen equals 12. One mole of sodium equals 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles of sodium. Here's the trick. Avogadro's number has to be placed in the most calculators a very specific way. Okay? So what you're going to do is you are going to put First off, you're going to take 17, divide it by 23, and then you have to multiply. And this is how you should put it in there. 6.022, and then, I don't know what your calculators are, and we'll go over it, but you're going to be able to see if you're going to do this right right away. You're going to either put E23. Some of your calculators have EE. I would look above your number 7 button. That's usually where it is. Some calculators have a button that says EXP. That's usually to the right of your zero or your decimal point. Or if you have a teal calculator, a teal and white calculator. Those are a little trickier, but those have a 10 to the X. Okay. If you do not put it in this way, you might be off by a factor of 10. So it's going to be 17 divided by 23 times 6.022 E E23. And your answer should look like this. 4.45 times 10 to the 23rd particles or atoms of sodium. Okay. So you're going to get some practice on this on your worksheet that you're going to get is not due until monday so when i come back tomorrow we'll go over this and i will help you but you need to give it a shot okay uh next you're going to watch a video that kind of summarizes some of the things i've already said and also my favorite part of it some of the analogies of how big a mole really is and i have a few more that i'll read on uh friday but uh the money one is amazing uh just be aware when he says that it's he spends it every second of his life, uh, how much he has left. So how big is a mole and what is a mole? We'll watch that next. So uh, after that, we'll work on our worksheet and I will see you tomorrow when we talk more about the mole.